Hey guys, welcome to another Queen's Blood game, and we are here back at Gongaga. Uh, so this is part two of Gongaga's players, and there is only one, and it is Regina, who we did play on the Shinra 8, the ship. Um, I don't expect this to be an easy one. Cloud, fancy seeing you again. What are you doing here? No, don't tell me. Are you here for a match? I'm game, I guess. Oh, come on. You doing this or what? Continue with the same deck that I have been using. Let's see how she plays. Um, so we are going to mulligan the Sea Devil to begin with. And we will start with... Unfortunately, we've only got one, and that's the Flame Trooper. And we'll get the Tombra King straight in. Um, so we will use that there. place I do not want that So we'll use the Moogle there to take that one back. And again, it just depends on what he does, which is that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Vincent there in the middle. Because what I want to do is put... Actually, first off, have I got another replacement card? So I'm going to do that first and power up the Tombri again, taking that space at the top. And I will do that again. And Regina's got no more cards to play. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put Yuffie there in the middle. And she will power up my Tombri card quite considerably. And also, it gives me uh, the Galleon Beast. Sea Devil. Now, with the Sea Devil in play, it allows me to power up other cards. And then... If I do that again, it will power up the Tombri. Uh, 
and then depending on what happens here I might play this and I might not um, that's actually going to hinder a lot of their cards giving me a complete win that master tombri card is something else And we get the Malasaros, if that's how you pronounce it. Come, let me tell you a story. Once, there lived a queen of peerless beauty and compassion. She loved her people, and they in turn loved her. But one day, a change came over the queen. In the blink of an eye, her love turned to hate, her compassion to cruelty. Fair and beauteous though she remained, her heart became black as pitch. Conquest was now her cause, her subjects mere fodder to feed her boundless ambition. And so her kingdom grew as her people perished. Until, that is, a ray of hope appeared. A sorceress who would be their salvation. The Emerald Witch, they called her. And with her arcane powers, she led the people in rebellion, captured the queen, and put her to death. Dark as shadow, and from this wicked Ikor, the myriad fiends of the world were born. And that is the story of the Shadow Blood Queen. Some call it a parable, a myth, a fairy tale, and I wish it were. But she is as real as you and I, and she is coming. Her resurrection is nigh. You know what must be done. She cannot be allowed to return. She must not reclaim her throne. I pray you will succeed where I so miserably failed. You are our last hope, Cloud. I await you at the haunted hotel. You must hurry. Oh. Don't mind me. Not been feeling so hot. Hey, Cloud. Do you know anything about the Shadowblood Queen card? It's the most powerful card in the world. One of a kind. Though, it seems there's a special card that can supposedly counter it. The Emerald Witch. <gasps> sorry, sorry. Just forget I said anything. I'm really tired is all. So many competitions lately. Congratulations, Cloud. You have risen to the rank of Blood Marquee. By the way, I recently received a letter addressed to you. It read, I'll be waiting for you at the Hotel of the Gold Saucer. From a friendly specter. Are they inviting you to play Queen's Blood with them? I wonder. <laughs> okay guys, so that gives us our player at the Golden Saucer. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.